Hi everyone and welcome back to the Big Sis Real. If you couldn't tell by that little preview video there, we're going to be looking into the concepts of extended realities and we will also explore the theory of immersion a little bit um, and then lastly we'll discuss the potential for VR and AR use in medical training. First up, what are extended realities? Milgram et al. define the reality-virtuality continuum in which reality, virtual reality and mixed realities such as augmented virtuality and augmented reality sit on. The left side of the spectrum includes anything consisting solely of real objects, whereas the right defines any environment consisting solely of virtual objects. On the website XR for All, I found some great explanations of the different types of extended realities. They explain augmented reality as the perception of the real environment with virtual elements by mixing in real-time, spatially registered digital content with the real world. Some examples of this include Pokemon Go and Snapchat filters. They describe augmented virtuality as the perception of a virtual environment with real objects. These elements of the real world are generally captured in real time and injected into the virtual environment. Finally, they define virtual reality as when a headset is used to fully immerse a user in a computer generated simulation. The theory of immersion is a great way to differentiate Milgram's right side of the spectrum. Slater and Wilbur, cited in Evans, argue that immersion is the degree to which VR projects stimuli onto the sensory receptors of VR users in a way that is extensive, matching, i.e. has congruence or resemblance between different sensory feelings, surrounding, vivid, interactive and plot forming. Evans proposes that VR is a medium that intends to immerse the user to the extent that they feel they're in a different location than the one they are physically in at the time. Recent advances in VR technology have made it possible to create highly immersive learning environments. According to Mulling et al, these environments are not only effective, but are easy to use and increasingly more affordable. Additionally, Mulling et al argues VR simulations are beneficial for medical graduates who lack the procedural skills or experience required to manage emergencies. Through completing a literature review, I have found the main benefits of VR and AR in healthcare training are. Number one is realism and reproducibility. VR simulations offer realistic scenarios that are reproducible. This consistency eliminates the variations that can occur during traditional training sessions with mannequins and reduces the need for training facilitators. Secondly, they enhance the learning experience. VR fosters a sense of immersion, which is shown to increase interest, concentration and overall learning. VR and AR use in healthcare training also improves decision-making abilities, which in turn enhances and ensures patient safety. Additionally, VR allows students to engage in trial and error learning without real world consequences. This is especially valuable in healthcare training where mistakes can have serious implications. Extended realities are beneficial for the training of executive functions, such as time management, task prioritization and situational awareness. Another benefit is that VR is used for the visualization of complex anatomical structures, aiding in the training of healthcare professionals. They can also help in developing cognitive skills related to remembering spatial and visual information and controlling responses to emotional or stressful situations. VR or AR equipped healthcare professionals are better prepared to provide personalized and efficient care due to their improved skills and improved decision-making abilities. Overall, the integration of ER and AR in healthcare training offers a wide range of advantages, including improved skills, realistic simulations, enhanced learning experiences, and better patient care and safety. So far, the limitations of VR and AR in healthcare revolve around the limited amount of evidence-based long-term research. However, current technological barriers also play a part. Hill et al. explains that research for VR in training is still at infancy in terms of evidence-based long-term research, and that studies have yet to be done on the impact to emotional skills. Beams et al. also argues that the current image quality and latency of devices reduces the effectiveness of immersion. 
Another issue explained by Beebs et al. is the long-term feasibility of extended reality devices. This is due to the fact that they can cause motion sickness, fatigue, cognitive overload, and ergonomics concerns. However, most students within Beam's study found that this was bearable. Another concern addressed by Erlings et al. is the cost of the devices. In conclusion, Beams et al. emphasizes to adopt MXR devices in medical training, there would need to be evaluation methodologies that quantify the current limitations for safety and effectiveness. That about sums up today's video. I hope you potentially learned something. Thank you for watching. Bye.